Zoning Board of Appeals um, New Canaan, December 4th. And the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of New Canaan will come to order on December 4th, 2023. When we call your case, we ask that each presenter first come up to the lectern, second identify themselves on the property in question, third state their request to the board, and fourth identify the hardship and the reason for the request. Remember your hardship cannot be financial in nature, it must run with the land and it's peculiar to your property. The board will then ask questions of you, after which you will sit down and we'll give those present the chance to speak. We will then be given an opportunity to answer any questions or sum up your request. We record the meeting, so everyone must speak into the microphone and state your name. The board will then go into business session, discuss and make a decision. There are five more voting members on the board and it takes four other votes to be granted a variance. We'll take attendance. Brittany? Yes. Turn it to you. Luke present. Arden present. Dell present. The rest of just Christy Bother absent. Yeah. So, in your, we are from um, last month, 879 Valley Road, zoning variance upon application of Robert Ashley McNeil. Owners for a variance of sections 3.5.8.3 to allow a barn slash storage unit to be located 12 feet from the side yard property line and an open air pavilion slash pergola to be located 29 feet from the side yard property line in lieu of a 35 foot setback in the two acre zone at 879 Valley Road, map 46, block 118, lot 188. Okay. Robert, do you want to? Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, Faith. Maybe you'll get up. Paper, I think you left earlier. Yeah, yeah, we'll absolutely circulate some information. Robert McNeil, owner of 879 Valley Road. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to, for me to be here again uh, to continue the conversation about our variance requests. I really appreciate it. Um, so, would you, should I share my screen here? Yeah. Okay. Here's the disabled participant screen sharing. No, go under all allow all participants to from your and I think you can do share a screen right under it. Oh my gosh, I cannot no. okay. okay, you should be able to now. Is there anyone um, on the Zoom meeting? No, it's just um, our minute taker. Okay. Okay, so uh, just to provide a quick recap of the initial meeting, uh, as Luke mentioned, so we initially had two variance requests, one for a barn slash accessory uh, building size 22 by 22 and in a secondary structure, an open air pool pavilion with the size 18 by 14 in size. Um, so in speaking with the board and obviously considering the feedback from our initial meeting, essentially what, what we have done in terms of adjustments is to withdraw the request for the pool pavilion and to reduce the size of the proposed barn um, to 22 by 18. And a few of the, I just thought I would go through a little bit of material. I know that Sarah already circulated an addendum that kind of walks through some of the additional materials submitted, but just to kind of, uh, you know, toggle through the, um, some of the data that uh, we discussed in the initial meeting, just by way of a quick kind of recap, this, this kind of encompasses our property. Um, you know, illustrates the, the narrow nature of the property, kind of the, the limited usability in terms of the potential locations for an additional structure. Um, we had had quite a bit of conversation about the, the need to really rule out any other potential areas where a potential structure could exist. And one of the, the main pieces of feedback that I really took away from, 
from the board here was to uh, you know, have a thorough conversation with the inlands and wetlands group, Kathleen Holland, and specifically to determine and to rule out if there could in any way be a structure that could go south of the pool or west of the river, basically directly behind um, our, our primary residence there. And so I'll get into a little bit of that. Um, but just again, wanted to kind of provide a quick recap from our initial meeting. This kind of encompasses the 225 foot uh, diameter circle, which our, our property obviously sits within and it has to sit within. And you can obviously see the river, uh, the Silvermine River there flows right, right through the property. Um, the initial proposed structures here and working with RKW, we started off with a proposed kind of 24 by 24 and the pool pavilion of, of, I think it was initially 22 by 22. And we, um, you know, made some uh, kind of preliminary adjustments, uh, making making those smaller and eventually kind of landed at the 22 by 22 and 18 by 14 for the initial meeting. And then since that time, we've essentially decreased the size of the proposed barn and essentially the, the proposed pool pavilion will will go away as we've withdrawn um, that request. So uh, again, this is kind of the, the proposed structure, what it would potentially look like. Um, we've got some, some blueprints here, again, very similar in nature to kind of what we discussed previously. Uh, same proposed you know, location. Again, this, um, this just illustrates our front yard. This is where the septic area exists, as well as a significant amount of access area out, uh, out front here. Um, this was just an example of uh, some of the um, details around kind of power we're currently using our garage space, and we have significant amount of, of equipment, things like that. And, and then just to kind of get into some additional photos of the backyard. That was another request by the board was it would be helpful to kind of further illustrate what does the backyard look like it look like in terms of kind of the sloping nature down to the river and if we could just better understand kind of what the topography looks like um, and uh, that would be helpful for, for the board to kind of better determine um, if a structure could in fact be placed in, in this area. And so uh, Kathleen and the, the Inlands group had provided some specific comments related to the potential for, for this area to have a structure on it. And this is essentially exactly where that would go kind of right in this area. And there is some sloping going from both north to south as well as from west to east obviously coming down towards the river and so a couple of the pieces of information can illustrate what the the inlands group had essentially said and i posed the question to her and also suggested that um, you know it, it the board had suggested it might be a good idea to get with rfw and have a, a topography overlay put onto the survey and some of her comments were that I don't I don't know that I would I would go that route. Let me provide some feedback first. And her her feedback was essentially that this location moves earth disturbing activities close closer to regulated areas and require significant alteration of the existing slope of land. Rob, one minute. Has everyone read this? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. yeah. Can we just admit this in? Yeah, so he had emailed that to me previously. So this is in the record. It's in the record. Yeah. Yeah, all this is in the record. Okay. Um, I'm happy to go through it though. I, I didn't know if everyone's already familiar yep. with all of this. I think we're familiar with it. Yes. Okay. Does anyone have any questions on this? No. No. It's pretty good. The whole... <laughs> you want you can keep presenting or you could ask if we could roll it off. I mean, does anyone have concerns about this? I don't know. No. No. No, you answered all of the questions, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think this is this bullet point. I mean, you're it's just going to be going through it and I think it addresses all of them. Yeah, exactly. The other document I circulated is, is essentially similar in nature to the email, okay. just kind of further bullet points mm -hmm. and recap some of the stuff that we talked about last week in terms of, uh, you know, 
significant hardships and obviously kind of walks through the concerns you guys have raised and um and just addressing all of those one by one even going up and down the road and and really just trying to verify in terms of hey are there other barns within a, a five or ten minute walk and I, I was able to observe why i was actually shocked there were 20 uh homes that had additional structures or barns on the property so i wouldn't say it's it's necessarily ubiquitous but certainly they're pretty common up, up kind of north on valley road there yeah. but I, I just wanted to make sure i was thoroughly kind of going through each topic that was raised yeah, yeah. yeah. okay i know um if you're open to voting you know. Chairman, I'm all set. Mm -hmm. So I guess we we'll close. Anyone in the audience have questions for or against us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I make a motion that we allow it um, because the majority of the lot is on the other side of the river, so it's non usable. The project is very extreme in the back, and it interferes with wetlands if we moved it to one location. Definitely consistent with the area. Mm -hmm. I grew up that street too. The other day I saw a lot of, a lot of barns on it. I don't know why it wasn't showing on the aerial plan before. Yeah, they don't come up for some reason. Um, you can't go up in this extent. I, th I think that's it. You know, we have the shape of the lot here. It's not going to be visible from the neighbor's property because of the screening. He's downsized the place away. So. Sure. And I second that, you know, based on Kathy Holland's comments, I think it was great that the applicant did talk to the Inland CD Wetland Commission. Um, that echoes your comments. And I think right area too, it's uh, quite a few yeah. barns that, yeah. you know, located, yes, yeah. you know, in that vicinity. Um, and, and obviously having walked the, the yard myself inside that fenced area, it really is challenging mm -hmm. to put anything you have the restriction of where you can even mm -hmm. build because of the left and the mm -hmm. river. So the most of the land's unusable on the other side. That's a very unique yeah. factor. Yeah. I haven't seen that yeah. on the lock line. I remember we've seen a similar issue with this one on like the no lock line before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it had all these extra. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and like and like that. So um, and he went through the the um pool for Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brittany? Yes, Brittany. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Yeah, we all said okay. Rip Singer. Brittany in favor. Rip Singer in favor. Rip Singer in favor. Carter in favor. Dylan in favor. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for such an organized. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was afraid it wasn't going to be here. I like the bullet. You follow through with a lot. All the questions you've got. Thank you, Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Okay, so next item on the agenda is um, minimal of minutes. Does anyone have to review the minutes? Mm -hmm. Then we yes. have a comment, selection, two minutes. Right. Want to make a motion? All right. The motion, Rich Carrington, to approve the minutes. Party in favor. Okay. That's in favor. Bill in favor. In favor. In favor. <laughs> Good night. Good night. So we don't have any applications in the queue, so we won't have a January meeting. I we are anticipating one coming in for February, so we'll do annual officer elections um, in the February meeting as well. Um, but that's it. Does the board elect like the officer? Does the select the board elect the king? The board elects the officer. Okay. For um, chair and secretary. What's the meaning of selectmen? So that's just an organization organizational meeting. So they what they like to do is have the first selectman there for the officer election, okay. but procedurally it's okay. not required. So the new first selectman would she come for that meeting? I do not know. Okay. It will depend on your schedule in February. But we want the record. No, we're okay. going to throw in the meeting then. So. Okay, so I move to join the meeting at 7. Second. Sir. In favor? Yeah, all in favor. Okay, all in favor.